Hello, welcome to the KT Optometry Show. I'm Dr. Kwa Trung, and tonight we have two special guests, Dr. Michael Tran and Dr. Mini Ta. They are local optometrists here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, they are part of New Optics Optometry here in the Convoy area. And tonight's topic is orthokeratology. And what is orthokeratology? What's going on with, I know myopia is a fancy word for mm -hmm. nearsightedness, correct? And so I know there's so much prevalence of it nowadays. Why is that, Dr. Tran? Uh, first off, uh, Dr. Trung and VNTV, thank you so much for having us on. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, myopia, also known as nearsightedness. Uh, nearsightedness is a huge problem in the U.S. alone. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, the U.S. population was about 25% uh, was nearsighted, but now we're quickly approaching 50%. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, it's becoming a huge issue. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know that we learned in school there was a study where I think it was Eskimos or something. There wasn't, there wasn't any formalized education. And then they yeah. started reading books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then like 80% became nearsighted, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what happens with our eyes, it's, our bodies are very adaptive. So mm -hmm. it actually, our eyes structure to what we do a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So nowadays we have computers, every, every work environment has computers and we have kids who learn on their iPads and it's a very close environment, right? And so exactly. we have that, that huge prevalence now. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, also, you can thank your mom and dad for, uh, for genetics. being your side. There's yep. a genetic There's component genetics. to yep. it, but definitely, uh, like Dr. Trung said, um, uh, kids uh, nowadays are spending, you know, pretty much four or five hours, even longer, in front of a, a tablet. I know my niece and nephew; mm -hmm. they're in front of a tablet all day. Yeah. And so, what's happening is that it's a lot of stress on our visual system, and our eyes are adapting to that distance there. And so what happens is that the eye starts to grow longer mm -hmm. and it becomes uh, more nearsighted. Mm -hmm. But there's good news because now today and tonight we're talking about a possible, to help possibly reduce this nearsightedness for children, right? As their eyes are growing. Exactly. Called ortho orthokeratology. Mm -hmm. um, so what exactly is orthokeratology? So orthokeratology, also known as ortho -K, mm -hmm. um, it's a way of controlling uh, nearsightedness in kids. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been cases where not only does it slow down nearsightedness, it mm -hmm. also stops nearsightedness. Wow. Okay. And what orthokeratology is, is a mold that a kid wears at nighttime mm -hmm. and they sleep in that mold and when they wake up, mm -hmm. uh, they take off the lens. Uh, one of the added benefits is that they get to see clear without glasses wow. or contacts. Wow. Uh, but by wearing uh, these lenses, molds at nighttime, mm -hmm. uh, it's been shown in a lot of clinical studies that it slows down mm -hmm. uh, nearsightedness. Wonderful. So, but it's a very safe, it's a very safe medical device. Very safe. It's FDA approved, approved. Uh -huh. uh, for all ages, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I fit uh, ortho-K in uh, kids as young as seven years wow. old at my clinic. I know it involves special training and also special, because um, uh, at my clinic, I don't have that special uh, training. And then the, I know you, you specialize in it at your yeah. clinic. Yeah, okay. so uh, with orthokeratology, uh, we require a topographer, mm -hmm. which uh, yep. maps the front surface the of yep. the kid's Definitely. eyes. And uh, that allows us to create a mold that fits their eyes uh, better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a funny story to share with you, because I actually did a presentation in 10th grade on myopia, but except mm -hmm. I, I called it myopia. <laughs> myopia. <laughs> so with my whole presentation, I was saying, oh, myopia, I'm wearing glasses, it's correct, you know. And then I didn't get corrected until the very end. They're like, qua, it's myopia. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> now you tell me? You let me go my, through my 10-minute spiel in uh, honors English or whatever that class was. But uh, yeah, just a little tidbit. So, but yeah, that's why I picked actually, uh, picked being optometrist is maybe that had an influence on it. <laughs> so, um, Minnie, um, so with your expertise, what do you recommend for, for children? when they, you know, as they're reading, as they're going through school, what would you say? Um, I would say um, it's important to take breaks. It's important mm -hmm. to have balance in your life. Mm -hmm. I know with, um, you know, with iPads and cell phones and computer with the increase in technology, it's very difficult. That's mm -hmm. where their, their, their world is right now, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. But unfortunately, you know, having that, that world right there as they're developing, as their eye is developing, mm -hmm that's how they are growing to become more nearsighted yeah. because they think that that's their world. So it's important to take breaks. Mm -hmm. So have a balance, go outside, play, mm -hmm. give your eyes a break. Great. Not too much studying, not too much yeah, remember digital we learned, world. We learned about the 20, 20, 20 rule. Exactly. Yeah. So every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break, look at something 20 feet away. Exactly. If you make a conscious effort, it actually doesn't apply just to children, for everyone. Exactly. Like, I try to do it, but sometimes, you know, 
right? For everyone, in, even in the workplace, we're at work, we're in front of the computer for eight hours straight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it causes a lot of eye strain, it yep. causes back ache. So it's important, to, yep, 20, 20, 20 rule. Mm -hmm. um, just try to remember that every day. And just good, um, you know, work ergonomics. You know, make sure and have good posture, make mm -hmm. sure the computer is at eye level or slightly <coughs> below, mm -hmm. um, not slouched over, things like that. That should help make it a little bit more comfortable and prevent any eye strain, eye fatigue, um, things like that. Definitely, because I know when we're on front of the computer, our eyes have a tendency not to blink as much, right? Exactly, so, our, uh, our blink rate actually decreases mm -hmm. when we're in front of the computer. So doing that 20-20-20 rule will mm -hmm. kind of remind your self to, mm -hmm. to, to blink a little bit. And sometimes, yeah, patients come in, they think their prescriptions change. They mm -hmm. say, doc, I'm using the computer all day long. My eyes are really dry. It, my vision's really blurry. But they don't realize like 15% of our focusing is through our tear film. And so when the eyes are dry, the vision's going to be blurry as well. Absolutely. So you need good, we good always tear recommend film. a good, good relubricant drop right, yep, to, to absolutely. our patients. Yes. Very good. So um, I, I guess <clears throat> uh, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Tran, um, so who's a good candidate for this orthokeratology? So good candidates, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we fit them as young as seven-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So uh, in kids for the myopia control, seven to 18 years old, okay. that's when uh, the eyes are still growing and still adapting mm -hmm. to the environment. Um, and also, you know, ortho K is not just for kids, it's mm -hmm. for adults as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I fit them in adults who don't like the inconvenience of wearing contact lens mm -hmm. because you guys know dryness yeah. is a huge issue, it's right? Yeah. Uh, you know, there are swimmers, we know that contact mm -hmm. lens and water don't mix, mm -hmm. and but yet they still need to see, so ortho is a good option for for, for them, um, you know, just for athletes mm -hmm. in general. How, how's the, um, I know you, you, the special device, you sleep in it, mm -hmm. right? How's the comfort? Is it, does it bother patients or how do they yeah. feel? So uh, the first night, uh, you know, our eyes are a little bit more sensitive, so they're gonna have that, uh, the lens awareness mm -hmm. the first night, uh, but when, once the moment they close their eyes, they won't mm -hmm. feel them anymore. And each night as they wear them, it gets more and more comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it pretty much the, after the first night, they can see the next day, or does it take a little bit of time? How does it work? Yeah, so in a majority of cases, uh, the moment they take it off, uh, they see a, a, a improvement in mm -hmm. their vision. Uh, depending on the severity of their prescription, yeah. uh, it can take up to two weeks Maybe before you yeah. the, get to the 2020 level. Uh -huh. And then it lasts the whole day, or even maybe two days? From what yeah, I understand. yeah Possibly, exactly. Depending Sometimes on the it patient. can last up to three days, days depending, on the patient. depending on their prescription. Yeah. But it's a gradual, right? They don't just be driving suddenly, oh, I can see in the <laughs> oh, I can't see at all. Right? <laughs> yes, it's right. definitely okay, more, okay. more yeah, gradual. Very gradual. All right, all right that's yeah. good to know, because yeah. yeah, we don't want any, uh, right? we want to be, be safe for our patients. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, do you want to add anything about orthokeratology before we move to our next segment, Dr. Tran or Dr. Ta? So, um, I guess to, to wrap it up, orthokeratology is, um, you know, one excellent um, alternative mm -hmm. to, um, you know, people who don't like wearing glasses mm -hmm. or contact lenses. Um, or an alternative to LASIK. Mm -hmm. LASIK is, is, is an excellent option for corre um, correcting your prescription. Mm -hmm. um, however, some people, one, are not good candidates, yep. or two, you know, they're a little apprehensive about, about LASIK. Mm -hmm. So that's where orthokeratology is um, an excellent option um, for treating their, their correction, um, like myopia. Okay. And, um, and then again, slowing the progression of, of myopia mm -hmm. because, uh -huh. um, in, uh, studies have shown that um, having high levels of myopia actually can increase your risk of certain ocular diseases, mm -hmm. such as retinal detachments, um, cataracts, glaucoma, or glaucoma. glaucoma exactly. Right, yeah. So things like that can possibly lead to blindness. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are de uh, definitely something very important that we want to mm -hmm. prevent. Yeah, just a side note today, I had a patient that was her, her, the daughter brought in the, the father and he was from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then he was telling me his symptom was, I just can't see anything, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's dark. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he had surgery over in Jamaica. They don't know what surgery, mm -hmm. but looking at his eye, I could already see the dense cataract. And also, mm -hmm. we did a dilated, did a retinal scan, and fully cupped out optic nerves. I don't, oh, wow. people don't understand, so. but a glaucoma, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the diseases that it's a painless, yep. right? Unless it's high pressure, but it's mm -hmm. actually one of the risk factors is high pressure. But many, there's many other factors now that uh, they've, they've discovered with glaucoma. So that's why we always recommend to our patients, even if they see well, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Always to get your eyes checked because it's not just vision. It's about preserving your vision your whole life. You want to make sure your eyes stay healthy. Exactly. Exactly. A mm -hmm. lot of uh, eye diseases, a lot of uh, blinding eye diseases, there's no signs or symptoms. Mm -hmm. 
until it's too, too late. late. And mm -hmm. that's why we tell our patients that it's important for you to come in every year for a comprehensive eye exam so that we can stay on top of things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, these blinding eye diseases are, you know, are only caught by uh, when we do these for eye exams, exams right? Because, mm -hmm. for example, like glaucoma, it's kind of like a sinking ship. If it mm -hmm. caught early, we can put that patch in. That right. exactly. So the ship, st ship stays afloat much longer. Exactly. Uh, you know, I like so, that analogy. Yeah. I, know. I learned in school about that. I forgot the doctor who told me in Berkeley, the Cal, Cal Berkeley. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so that actually transitions us to our next segment, which is kind of like debunking myths, okay. right? A truth know. or myth game, right? Yes. So we just talked about that our, one of our topics was, you know, even if a patient always asks me, hey, doctor, I, I see well, why do I have to? get my eyes checked, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Uh, and I haven't, the guy hasn't been seen in 45 years. That's mm -hmm. his first eye exam ever. But yeah. luckily, you know, his eyes are healthy. Yeah. And then, but for every one of them, there's, there's patients out there mm -hmm. that they come in and I have diabetes, yep. right? Yep. That's exactly. caught early exactly. and bleeding exactly. in the eye. Had a patient, early 20s. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, my eyes feel a little funny. Had a, um, uh, basically bleeded out from the diabetes, which led to a possible, um, uh, stroke in the eye. Yeah, yep, she had a, exactly uh, a had an artery occlusion, yeah. of a retinal artery occlusion. Same thing with me. A lot of my patients, they come in, oh, I was uh, going to get my license and I saw that I couldn't really see <laughs> yeah. as clearly. And so they're thinking that they just might need glasses. Mm -hmm. And then what do you know when we do um, an exam, there's a stroke in the eye mm -hmm. and I, you know, have you seen your primary eye care doctor? Mm -hmm. How's your blood sugar? How's your high blood pressure? Things mm -hmm. like that. A lot, many um, patients don't know that a lot of systemic diseases um, mm -hmm. actually can show signs first in the eyes. So again, another important um, reason to have your eyes checked regularly. Mm -hmm. There's no symptoms. Um, yeah, so exactly. you don't want to wait until it's too late. Yeah, there's that uh, old adage, right? That the eyes are the windows to the soul. Exactly. Right? I but not only the, the soul, but our overall health. Exactly. Overall health. Mm -hmm. So the, people don't realize, but the eyes are only part of our body where we can see the arteries and veins mm -hmm. without any type of excision or biopsy. Yep. Exactly. Right? So exactly. when we do our full thigh dilated exam and mm -hmm. do our, we, our fancy equipment, we're able mm -hmm. to detect a lot of early stuff that sometimes the primary doesn't even catch. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the next thing we want to ask you, so carrots, right? How is, we get a question about carrots all the time. <laughs> Doc, you know, is it really true? Bugs Bunny, does he have really good eyes because he eats carrots? Yep. What, what, what is that, Dr. Tran? So, what, what do you think? Uh, carrots, um, it's filled with uh, vitamin A, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important for the overall health of our eyes <laughs> and also our body. But um, it doesn't improve our vision. It doesn't make our <laughs> prescription uh, any better, yeah. unfortunately. But you should still eat your carrots. Yeah, that's it. It prevents ocular eye diseases like uh, macular degeneration. Yeah, the beta carotene. Beta carotene. Exactly. And carrots help that. It's a, it's a neuroprotective factor. Mm -hmm. in exactly. Eyes. So mm -hmm. you don't have to gouge in, like, eat tons of carrots. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, carrot juice is actually pretty good. It really yeah. is. It is yeah. good, and it's good mm -hmm. for you. Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny even told me so. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dr. Ta, well, um, what would you recommend in terms of, I know, with children, right? Um, uh, why, why is it that you know we're seeing such a bad increase in nearsightedness? You think? Um, I think really it's again going back to technology and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. increase in iPads, cell phone yeah. use, things like that. Um, like Dr. Tran had mentioned, um, parents. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, we are it, it is inherited through our parents. The but tendency it, <laughs> to become more nearsighted will increase mm -hmm. due to the increase in you know nearsighted stuff like technology, mm -hmm. iPads, cell phones, things like that. Sure. What's another myth? It's a good one that you you have um, patients ask you a lot. Um, so a lot of parents uh, will bring up, oh, my kids, they always uh, sit really close mm -hmm. to the television. Yeah. Uh, is that making my kids eyes worse. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really no clinical study showing that it, it ruins or damages mm -hmm. our eyes. Uh, but you should it should raise some reflex. It could be a sign that your kid is nearsighted. Mm -hmm. So you should bring them in and get their eyes checked to, to see yeah. if they, yeah, if they are nearsighted. That's true because sometimes they are nearsighted. That's why they're sitting yeah. so close. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. I had a patient like he was just a my, he comes in, he's a minus five already. Mm -hmm. The patients, wow. yeah, the parents don't even know. They're like, yeah, I don't know why my boy is always sitting in front of the TV. Like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> that's a good idea to, you know. Yeah. Um, we, the, 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 it's usually recommended by age five, right? Well, even mm -hmm. younger sometimes. Actually, sometimes younger. even Young, younger, younger yeah, than that, depending definitely. on, you know, a lot of times the pediatrician looks at younger mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's good that we have our technology. Right, to, right. To, and a lot of the times, out I have, I have uh, parents bring in their children um, as young as three um, mm -hmm. because they themselves know they've had 
um, glasses since they were younger. Young, so, yeah. or they have certain um, you know eye conditions like strabismus, where the eye you know turns, things like that. Mm -hmm. So the parents are a little bit more concerned about their child having mm -hmm. that. So that's great that they, they bring mm -hmm. them in early. Sometimes you see, uh, I know, those infomercials, yeah, hey, do these exercises. You don't have to wear glasses anymore. Yeah. What, what, what's that's going a, on there? That, that's a good one. What's, a, what's going on so there? So that one is, um, there's a truth and a, and, a, and a myth to it. So mm -hmm. basically, if you're talking about doing eye exercises to improve your vision, um, meaning change your prescription, that is uh, mm -hmm. a myth. That is not, that is not <laughs> correct. That will not work. Yeah, that. so be, um, but when you're talking about, um, you know, maybe your eyes having some issues um, working together. Mm -hmm. So binocular vision, they're mm -hmm. having a difficult time working together. Or maybe your focusing muscles are um, not as strong or a little too strong. Things like there is um, vision therapy, actually. Mm -hmm. that yeah, because our eyes are controlled by a set of muscles. Exactly. And accommodation or focusing exactly. can actually be strengthened. Yeah. Uh, what I, there, there's certain exercises that I attribute to kind of like analogy, like bicep curls. Right, mm -hmm. it, it, you it, you develop stronger muscles for your eyes, mm -hmm. and so there is some validity to that. But but it, as far it's as not prescription, a, yeah, yeah. No. I'm yeah. sorry, but yeah, <laughs> but some of those claims are pretty erroneous. So, <laughs> but just uh, yeah. So um, to end our show, I'd like to, Dr. Tran, Dr. Top, to share one. T each of you share one tidbit. Um, okay. To yeah. show our audience. So since we're on the topic of myopia control, mm -hmm. uh, I want to encourage you parents out there to. You know, just let your kids go outdoors mm -hmm. and, and play. Uh, Wonderful. It's been shown that Wonderful. the more time they spend outdoors, mm -hmm. the less likely they become nearsighted. And so... And they're healthier. And healthier they're as healthier. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The Especially vitamin with, D from the... From yeah, the vitamin sun, also right? with, um, you know, onset of type 2 diabetes. Exactly. On juvenile onset now, which mm -hmm. is, you know, it's all, it's all healthy choice, right? Mm -hmm. It's a health lifestyle. Right, style. right. So I always tell, tell my uh, patients, please have your kids play out there, you know? Yeah. Play the Pokemon. He's out in the park. You know, he's <laughs> I walking. Know, I'd rather yeah. him play Pokemon than, 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 than sit in front of the, the thing and not moving. Video games. Yeah. That's yeah. not burning calories, but if he's yeah. moving and he's fighting Pokemon, good for him. All right, Dr. Ta, one tidbit of advice. Um, I guess, um, back to what I said earlier about with technology mm -hmm. and um, everyone being on computers and iPads nowadays, I want to touch up again on the 2020. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure and take those breaks um, every 20 minutes, look 20 feet away for about 20 seconds. That will relax the eyes, remember to blink. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, just kind of work ergonomics. Make sure the computer is mm -hmm. eye level or slightly below and comfortable position. Awesome. I want to thank Dr. Tran, Dr. Ta for a wonderful show tonight. Thank you for uh, having we're, us. We're happy to answer any questions um, that our audience has. And um, you guys have a great evening. Thank you so much for watching our show. Thank you so much, guys, for having thank us. You. Thank you.